Hello children of St. Mark's and welcome back for another story from this World Story Bible from Sparkhouse Family. Today's story is in our lectionary version of the Bible, but it's not in the Kindle version. So I will hold up the pictures for you to follow along, but I'm probably going to have to read first. Okay. So today's story is Meeting God on the Mountaintop. You know, the stories we've been reading about Moses, remember Moses was in, well, first Moses was born and his mother put him in a, or his sister put him in a basket and he went across the Nile River and Pharaoh's daughter found him. And Miriam, Moses' sister, says, I know a Hebrew woman who can care for your baby. And then when Moses was old enough, he returned to Pharaoh's daughter. And this saved his life. Then, Pharaoh, grew, uh, Pharaoh mm, yes, Moses grew up, and the um, all the Hebrew people had become very a lot. There were a lot of Hebrew people, and so Pharaoh wanted to control them, and he made them slaves. He made them slaves and forced them to work all the time, and they didn't have much food, and they were tired, and they ached, and ha they had pains from all the hard labor they were doing and God said Pharaoh or not Pharaoh God said Moses go to Pharaoh Moses you are going to get Pharaoh to set your people free and Moses says I can't do that and God says take your brother Aaron with you he will help you speak so Moses and Aaron go to Pharaoh and say let my people go and Pharaoh said no and then all these things started happening. And each time something happened, like the river water turned to blood, Moses and Aaron would go back to Pharaoh, and Pharaoh would again say no. So they went like ten times, right? All these plagues, the, the gnats, the death of the livestock, the frogs, the locusts, the... Uh, I said the livestock. So, and then until finally, uh, there was the death of the firstborn. The Hebrews, the Israelites, escaped the death of the firstborn plague by putting the lamb's blood over their door as a sign for death to pass over that house. Finally, Pharaoh said, go, get out of here. This is awful. You know, we're all mourning. Just go. So Moses starts to lead the people, and they quickly pack up and they leave, and they get to the Red Sea, and they're taking a little break, and all of a sudden they hear the Egyptians coming after them. Pharaoh has changed his mind, and he sent his army to go catch the, he the Hebrews, the Israelites. And God says to Moses, come on, put out your staff. So Moses puts out his staff, his hand, and the water of the Red Sea parts. And there's these big walls of water and this dry land in between. And they cross the dry land. And as soon as they get to the other side, Pharaoh's hand goes up again. The waters come crashing down. And by now, all the Egyptians are had been traveling through what was dry land and is now full of water. Well, this event of the Israelites leaving Egypt and looking for the promised land is referred to as the Exodus. An exodus is a big fancy word that means exit, to leave. In our Bible, our Bible is made up of many books. And so the first book is called Genesis. And the name Genesis means beginning. And that's where we read about like the beginning of creation. And we read about Adam and Eve and Cain and Abel and Jacob and Joseph and his brothers, and all of those other characters until we get to Moses. And when we get to the stories of Moses, we're now in the book of Exodus. So today's story also comes from the book of Exodus, because remember in our last story, you know, they they get out of, of Egypt, they are starving and hungry, and God sends them all the manna and quail. They could eat, kind of like an all-you-can-eat buffet, and then you know, they're still in Exodus. They're still searching for the promised land, wandering around the desert. And God says, Moses, meet me up here on this mountain. And he says, these are some rules you should live by. This will help the people learn to be 
independent, free people caring for each other and for God's creation. So today's story picks up where we've left off in the book of Exodus. Meeting God on the mountaintop. Moses blinked. Misty clouds blocked his vision. He couldn't see the path. God had a message for the people. The message would give important instructions about how to live together. Moses climbed higher and higher up Mount Sinai to receive God's message. Moses looked behind him. He knew God's people were waiting at the bottom of the mountain, but he couldn't see them. He was alone in the dark cloud. So here we have Moses climbing up. We see, whoop, sorry about that. He is looking at that dark cloud. Moses was too nervous to step forward. What will I find inside the cloud, he wondered. How will God teach us to live together? Over there, a spark. Moses inched forward toward the light. The spark grew into a flame. The flame grew into a raging fire. Now Moses could see clearly. The path glowed orange from the flames. Moses squinted into the bright light. The shrubs on the mountain were on fire, but they weren't destroyed by the flames. Then Moses remembered the burning bush from many years ago. The bush was on fire, but it didn't burn up, just like the shrubs on this mountain. This fire is from God, Moses realized. He knew the fire wouldn't hurt him. Slowly, he continued up the rocky path. Moses stayed on the mountain with God for 40 days and 40 nights. So here we have Moses looking, see? Sorry. Here we have Moses, and there, there is that light whoop, right there under my finger. And then it gets bigger, and it becomes the flames. And there's Moses. Moses realizes what's happening and that he is speaking to God in these flames. Okay, so that's our story for today. Come back next time, and we'll have more. Bye.